Convention News Television is bringing you video highlights from one of the most dynamic and informative speakers on the topic of new media marketing. Hi, I'm Ed Hyland here in San Antonio, Texas. Best-selling author and marketing strategist David Meerman Scott just finished talking to members of the Convention Industry Council. They had a very engaging talk, one in which Meerman Scott urged them to embrace new media. Marketing online is different than what we've done before, and there's this element of fear, and people say, I can't believe you're going to market on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and do all these things. So let's talk about the Singapore Tattoo Show. Yes, a real event started, started just this year. January 2009 was the first Singapore Tattoo Show. And they had an ambitious goal for the first year of drawing 5,000 people to the Singapore Tattoo Show. They started a Facebook group called Tattoo Artistry, and they started it about six months prior to the event, which, start, which happened in January of 2009. And it was the first time that anyone had created a significant group that aggregated the people in Singapore who are fans of tattoos. And they went to this group and they shared, and that's where they learned about the Singapore Tattoo Show. They shared photographs of their tattoos and some of the work that's been done on their bodies. And if they're tattoo artists, they shared their work. And guess what? As a result of launching the Singapore Tattoo Show on Facebook first, they had three times the number of attendees that they had, that they had hoped for. Three times what their, their ambitious goal was. 15,000 people went to the Singapore tattoo, tattoo Show. And they're still talking about it. They posted photographs from the show on Flickr, which is a photo sharing site. They posted videos of the Singapore Tattoo Show on YouTube. The media wrote about it, such as Reuters. And they're already planning the Singapore Tattoo Show for 2009 using these same kind of techniques. It's 213 days away, it says here on the home page. So they're already planning it. The idea that we should be fearful of marketing through these online mechanisms and, and instead do all of the other usual things is what many of us are operating under. But there's all sorts of examples of people who can do this. I believe any, everybody in this room can achieve similar success. I truly do. I really think that you can go out there and you can create interest in your events. You can make the events as people are at the events even more interesting and share a bunch of ideas about that. To be successful with this kind of marketing, with this kind of promotion, to quote Yoda, <laughs> you have to unlearn what you've learned. Truly, you really have to unlearn what you've learned. Because we, if we've had experience doing marketing and promotions and, and, and communications around events, um, if we learned on the job or we went to school to learn, often what we've learned is the techniques of offline marketing. Um, the old rules versus the new rules. I'm not saying offline marketing is wrong or bad. It's not. It's different. So here are some of the things, four of them, that you need to think about that are different. I'm going to spend time talking a little bit about each of them. Buyer personas, earning attention, encouraging the sharing of your information online, and managing this fear thing. So firstly, buyer personas. Buyer personas is the idea of figuring out e exactly who are the people who are going to attend your events. It's instead of nameless faceless prospects that so many people are marketing to these days. Buyer personas is about unique marketing, demographic groups if you want to call them, target markets if you want to call them that, instead of just the vast unwashed people. And you tell your story to an interested market. So I don't know if any of you do this, but when I travel, and I travel a lot, I think this is the 40th hotel I've been in in 2009, I check out the hotel websites. How many of you checked out the hotel website before you came? Almost everyone. Have you noticed this? Every single hotel website in the world is exactly the same. Have you noticed that? It's true, right? Every hotel website is the same. What in the world is going on? It's really simple. Hotel websites are egotistical. They'll, they're built from the perspective of the hotel. They're talking about the product of the hotel, which is fluffy pillows and tasty shrimp and, and a river, river walk out, out back. And maybe they've got a, a, a really tiny swimming pool with not enough chairs, at least this hotel does. Um, 
And, and, and you guys noticed that, right? There wasn't enough chairs yesterday. I don't know about today. I didn't check it out today. Um, so that's the hotel's product. Now imagine, if you will, how different this hotel's website would be if instead of talking about the product on their site, they created information specifically for the buyers of hotel services. Now think about that for a minute. I came up with five buyer personas. I'm not in the hotel business. I know some of us are, Mindy. Imagine, though, if there was content especially for each of those buyer personas. So for the independent business traveler who makes a decision to come to San Antonio and wants to choose a hotel, what do they need? They want to have an elliptical machine, at least I do, in the hotel. Um, and they want to be able to exercise without having to wait in line. But why in the world are there eight different running machines and no elliptical, or only one elliptical machine? I'll never figure that out. Because they don't talk to their buyer personas to know what they want. Um, so there's the independent business traveler. Then there's the corporate travel manager of a company headquartered here in San Antonio. They're booking hundreds of rooms over an average year. They want to get the best price, maybe free internet connection for everyone in the company because they're a plugged-in company. Event planners. You guys are a completely different buyer persona than those other ones. What do you want to have? You want to be able to know what does the room look like in, in the configuration it's in now with rounds versus uh, what the room looks like in the configuration uh, of theater style. What if we put the screen on this side versus this side? Um, and a family choosing a vacation. How about a young couple planning on getting married maybe want to use this room for their reception? Imagine how different that site would be if there was content, especially for each of these buyer personas, for meeting planners, uh, event organizers. Imagine if the content on the site was designed especially for you. And there was really valuable information for you to, to figure out what's going on at this particular hotel. Or for the young couple who's planning on getting married, imagine if they had a blog that had links to the best wedding bands in San Antonio with links to the video of them playing so that the couple can choose. Oh my god, how cool would that be? And it's never happened. Think about the same thing from the perspective of your sites. Then I want you to be thinking about what do you want your buyer personas to believe about your organization? That's very different than what your event's about or what your company does. What do you want your buyer personas to believe? The next thing is that you need to earn attention. This is the one that trips people up, the idea that you can earn attention. So there's four ways to generate attention. Right? There's four ways to generate attention. That's what we're really trying to do as we're marketing our events. One way is we can buy attention. We can buy advertising. We can rent lists. We can buy magazine ads, yellow page ads, billboards or whatever. You can buy attention. You can beg for attention through the media. You can try to convince the media to write about you. Magazines, radio, television, newspaper, or broadcast about you. You can write press releases and hope the media will pick it up. Third way, you can bug people for attention. Now, I'm not saying that these are wrong. It's OK to buy attention, beg for attention, and bug people for attention. But there's another way that we're not doing which is earning attention by creating content that people want to consume, by creating fantastic YouTube videos, by doing blogs and working with bloggers, by going onto Twitter, by publishing fantastic information. But there's a fear around this thing. There's a fear around the idea of creating this attention, which is why I want to share with you what the United States Air Force is doing the United States Air Force. If ever there's an organization that should be a little bit fearful about social media, it's the United States Air Force. After all, they're about, they're about national security. But guess what? Here they are on Twitter, AFPAA, and they started following me on Twitter, the United States Air Force. I go, wow, this is pretty cool. So I, fo I followed them back, and then I sent a direct message to AFPAA, the United States Air Force, and I said, hello? <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> is this really the United States Air Force? And they came back and said, yeah, this is Captain David Faggart. I'm head of social media at the United States Air Force. I'm like, wow, that's unbelievable. So I did a blog post. I did a blog post, the US Air Force, this is my blog, armed with social media. Now, you have to admit, that's a pretty cool headline, isn't it? It's like my favorite headline, armed with social media. They're, and they're doing these most amazing things. And I had a chance to speak at their event for all 350 public affairs officers at the United States Air Force. 
And Captain, uh, Colonel Michael Caldwell, who's in charge of Air Force Public Affairs, says, we want every single airman to be on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, doing YouTube videos. They manage their fear in an incredibly powerful way. It's the United States Air Force, and they're totally into social media. I think that's fascinating, and it's a terrific example. <laughs>